Boom. And we are live. Thank you for coming on the show, Toby. How's it going? Awesome. It's going well, man. Thank you for having me. Of course. So we got to start off with uh, what is your favorite superhero? So my favorite superhero is definitely Iron Man. Iron Man. Uh, yeah. So Iron Man, he had all the money in the world, but he wasn't a good person until he overcame adversity. Um, and then when he overcame adversity, he used all his talents and all his finances to one, f build a dope suit, but two, to start <laughs> facilitating some good. Um, and he also seems to be the happiest, most down to earth. Awesome. So, okay. So then we got to dive in because this is kind of going in the conversation that we had before this and it's a good embodiment. I like uh, that Iron Man is your choice because similarly you're now rebuilding that infrastructure and going towards, I think your, uh, your suit is going to be the wellness facilities. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, for, for myself, I always like describe life. I mean, other people have said this too, as being like, are oh, you on a roller coaster? Um, and there have been points I'm 31 now, there've been points where I've been on the top part of the roller coaster and there's been points that um, I've been down. Um, and I would say right now I'm on the point where I'm climbing back up to the top. Um, and the, the wellness facilities are for me to, uh, it's a way for me to work with people in person and to actually feel a human connection. I love the aspect of online and digital coaching, but there's something about meeting a person, about shaking someone's hand, about giving a hug that you just cannot replicate. And that's for me about having that wellness center, having a chiropractic degree, um, being able to touch people and actually like see the difference, see their emotions, feel their emotions. What's it, it really drives me um, every single day when I'm going, going to class right now and, and reaffirming that this is what I'm supposed to be doing at this point in time. Totally. And you're coming, the cool thing is you're coming with a, a pre-built pyramid of beliefs, essentially, that's allowing you to go through, because I know a lot of people go through school only with school. And when they do that, it's like the layers of knowledge that they're getting in school are just going under the layers of knowledge they're getting in school versus like practical experience, self-research, self-trial, and you've done all those things. So it's literally, it's how I think college or higher learning should be you should be able to go experiment and learn for yourself and mm -hmm. then get the academics opinion i 100 percent agree it really is and there you know when it comes to academics there's there's structure and there's somewhat of a rigidness to this but when you get out to the real world it's very dynamic and it's fluid and it's constantly moving and changing so it's good to be able to experience and know what it's like to be someone um, who has suffered, whether it's just from back pain, from being stuck at a desk or in a car, hunched over my laptop all day and knowing what it's like to like wake up with a knot every day and like a crick in your neck. So, like it's, it's important to know what that feels like. And it's important also, you know, I gained 20 pounds to, to know what my sleep was like when I was overweight or how I felt. And like that's majority of America. And the, you know, from a health standpoint and from a medical standpoint, our system is very broken. And there's a fundamental flaw with how medical doctors are educated educated so to have that holistic background and to be able to know what it's like to also be in the shoes of people that you're trying to treat it's all important pieces of the puzzle that go in with like okay here's also your studies and the academic aspect of it totally and i don't know if you're as familiar with uh like the uh acupuncture chakras chinese medicine this book that i'm reading he's going through and he's taking such it's such a good route in the energy is voltage book with the physics concept of like, hey, here's the acupuncture points. Here's how these actually work on a physics level based on how your cells are holding positive and negative charges and stuff. And I'm like getting mind blown as to like, he's like, this does actually connect to here based on like the energy straight, the flow of ions. And like, I'm like, oh my God, there's so there's much that we don't, we don't talk about. Yeah. Um, acupuncture is fascinating. So my fiance is studying to be a doctor in traditional Chinese medicine. And um, I've just learned from the way that she's taught the Eastern philosophy. It's just very different. Uh, and there's more of like a metaphysical aspect to Eastern mm -hmm. philosophy. And when they say, you know, liver channels and gallbladder channels, it's not necessarily referring a hundred percent to the liver, but it's referring to the fact that there's a connection, a deep rooted connection everywhere and if you've ever gotten acu have you ever gotten acupuncture before yeah yeah only like twice twice so for example i was suffering from 
like the layman's terms would be like tennis and golf elbow. And I would ha I had it in both elbows. And when I was getting treated, I would have a needle in my left arm and I would feel the sensation in my right arm. And it's yeah. because everything is connected and there really is, I mean, we could get into like the anatomy aspect of like fascia and stuff, but there is this energy and, and, and it's somewhat like, um, in our Western society, we never fully understood it. So when we don't understand things, we're like, no, it doesn't necessarily work. It's placebo. It's all these other things. But if you ever really go with some pain and you give it a shot and you go with an open mind, uh, I, w I would be hard pressed to believe that people don't find, you know, true benefits or, or see real positive results. Yeah, no, I went to a place for ART, uh, act release technique, and it was for I don't know. I, I so I'm one of those people who I'm like, shit. If uh, insurance can pay for this or something, like I gotta try to get in there. Yeah. Um, and ART is like trying to reset everything. So like they were doing my lower back and my shoulder. I broke my uh, arm at a certain point, and I know I have a horrible calcium deposit. Like I uh -huh. just I feel it. I know it's there. I'm trying to get rid of it. Uh -huh. When I went, they like did. It was awesome because they're using the Gershwin like knife to like try to like get the calcium out she had like electro Graston, you mean oh Graston, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Gershwin's uh -huh. Gershwin the plays so it's not right. the plays <laughs> um they were using ele electro stimulation right uh acupuncture like i literally it was like 60 minutes and i got like all this done i was like i just want to like go to this like every day for a while because it seems like yeah. even and this is again where like the medis the medical industry is kind of broken because it's going towards just hey you're sick you're sick here there's no wellness or mm -hmm. health care mm -hmm. and that stuff even though it seems like it should only be for someone who has a problem not really because if you continue to do it right your fascia is going to work better your muscles are going to work better you're going to feel better mm -hmm. and you're going to de-stress yeah oh dude that's a that's 100 percent the case and we were talking about this too like um our bodies are just not physiologically adapted for what we're going through on a daily basis and it, whether you're talking about you know actually uh sitting down in chairs or being in cars or you're talking about just the excess emotional stress that's placed and our inability to properly deal with that stress and the way it's expressed is through the body. It's through tight muscles and those aches and pains. A lot of the times are coming from emotional stress and your body is just expressing it from a physical standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Let's dive into that a little bit. Cause I think that's something that like people, they often neglect the, the way that your emotions and feeling and how that like people often think that it's separate from them. And I know we talked about this a bit, how like, the lower body people think is separate from the upper body. It's very strange, but it's like our, our depictions of who we are and what we are. And it's like, I'm mad, but then you don't realize that, or I'm stressed. This is the biggest one. Mm -hmm. People don't realize stress affects your whole body. Sadness, happiness, it all affects your whole body. Like mm -hmm. sex affects your body because sex is working on all your systems and you feel great both during the act, but also it's increasing good positive emotions, oxytocin all mm -hmm. these different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, man, there's, there's so much when it comes to, I think stress is the number one killer though for everything. Well, and I believe that as well. It's also the number one complaint why people go to doctors. It really winds up being issues that are, um, ultimately, you know, you, you could trace the route back to being stressed. I forget the exact number, but it's between like 70 and 80% of the reason why people visit stock, visit doctors, primary care is all rooted in stress. Um, and the, the reason that I believe that there's a lot of problems. One, what you were just trying to say too, is that we have the tendency to look at everything in a closed system. We have a tendency of looking, I have a problem with digestion. There's something wrong with my small intestines. Um, I have a problem with, you know, you know, pain in my knee, whatever, everything that we do stress, like, you know, Oh, it's, it's my job. Like, um, we look at everything and we try to put just a one label on it and an easy way to explain it. Um, and we're not looking at human beings as these, uh, again, not to use the word metaphysical again, but there is this, mm -hmm. um, this all encompassing aspect to us. When you see a body, like so in, in class, we dissect a body and there, you know, everything is intact, right? There's a heart, there's a brain, but there's, there's no life. Yeah. Right. So like, what is that piece of life? What is that that makes us actually run? And it's something that we don't fully understand, but it's something you could tap into and you could, you could kind of feel it. 
if you really are um, intuitive and you and you um, and you are true to like your thoughts and your emotions and the way in which that you feel. But yeah, your mindset, um, food, sleep, all these things, what you're doing, all contribute to the actual efficiency and the effectiveness of your body and how it's functioning on a daily basis. And if there's a part of that that's lacking, and it'll cause an internal energy blockage. And that could be expressed in a number of different ways. So when you're talking about stress, there's different hormones that regulate the body. So you have, um, you know, a corticosteroid like cortisol. And if cortisol is elevated too much, then that means that there could be excess inflammation. And if there's excess inflammation, then what's going on? Uh, your body could be producing too many white blood cells. And then if that's going on, what else is suffering in, in a given way? Um, so yeah, it, you, to really dive in on this, it would be to, you'd have to look at each individual and, and really analyze what's going on on a daily basis from the second they wake up to the second they go to bed to understand what their past, you know, what their past experiences were like that have shaped this, their preconceived notions on what happiness or what success looks like and where they might find somewhat of a disconnect and then really analyze what they're eating, the way in which they're eating. It's crazy to see how many people think that they're, they're, quote unquote, healthy, and how yeah. much you could find wrong with their given life. Yeah, I mean, and that but exactly what you just said is that health is all encompassing. It's a lot more than just what you're eating. It's a lot more than if you work out three times a week. But other than that, you sit in the darkness most of the time in an office with people you don't like, everybody's sighing, all the signs increasing the CO2 in there. You don't mm -hmm. see the sunlight for more than 20 minutes a week. It's like every single thing. If you're in a city, noise pollution. Mm -hmm. you're, getting, you're seeing homeless people and that literally is bringing down your emotions. Yeah. You're seeing someone else suffering. There's right. like to, to go like, yeah, no, I had some, I had a kale last night, so I'm pretty healthy. <laughs> like, dude, come on. Like it's, it doesn't work that way. It's everything. Yeah. And okay. then, hey, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh. Oh, I was going to say, and then you have people who are like, well, yeah, but that's just too much work. And it's like, dude, you got one fucking life, man. If you're not going to put in the work to, to be quote unquote healthy, which mm -hmm. then decreases stress. So it feels like it's less perceived work. Mm -hmm. What are you like? No, yeah. man, you're, uh, you couldn't be more accurate. And the, the crazy thing is too. So like when we're talking about healthy, I've asked people, you know, well, like healthy, like what do you eat for breakfast? And they're like, well, and then I start like, I'll have, um, you know, grapefruit and then I'll have three oranges and then I'll have um, a bowl of cereal. I'm like, do you have any idea how much sugar that is? Like, yeah. like first thing in the morning, like you're spiking your insulin like that. And then um, another piece to like what we're talking about, like not to get too deep into here is like the concept of religion. Like people like that believe in, you know, afterlife or whatever heaven um, they really think that, and not that I don't think that, but they kind of diminish how important and how special mm -hmm. life is because of the thought of going somewhere else after you die. Um, and it's like, there's got to be something better than, than this. You know, this can't be all that there is. There has to be something better. And that's fine. I have no problem with that. But what if there isn't? And what if this is all you have? Yeah. And this is this is it. Like these 50 years, these 70 years, these 100 years, these 20, whatever it is. What if this is all that there is? Because this is the only thing that you know for sure that you're ever going to have, right? Exactly. And if you approached it like that and you approached it where there is nothing else and this is, and this is heaven and how are you going to be living if this is heaven? Are you going to be spending X amount of hours on Netflix, a hundred pounds overweight, if this is heaven and this is your only chance to experience anything. And I think that that aspect of it, um, again, without diving too much into that, it's, it's a part of people that they kind of just lose sight of. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. So this brings up a lot. Cause I, I often like to say that heaven and hell exist here and mm -hmm. it's your perception and how you create your reality because there's, Turn on the news, CNN, Fox, NBC, all the same story, all completely different stories. Mm -hmm. Now, the story you tell yourself in your head is the one that creates heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. On top of that, if you don't feel good and you don't know what you're doing, and even if, right, let's say there, there's, it depends, right? If we get into multiverse theory or all these different things, but let's say heaven is definite. Mm -hmm. Now, when you think about that, you go, okay, cool. So like, then I, it's not a scapegoat. What it is, is make the most of this one because now you got something else coming next. Like right. 
it's not like you're in a roller coaster ride and you're like, yeah, I'm hitting another couple of roller coasters today. So I'm going to, this one's going to suck. I'm going to hate it. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to go on the worst rides because later I have the best ride. No, right. you always go on the best rides because you have the choice. Right. And so, yeah, no, I think about that a lot, but then there's also, I don't know if you've studied, um, uh, I forget. It wasn't uh, Descartes. It was uh, one of the philosophers mm-hmm. in the big thing or the big universe. I forget what the book's called. He talks about uh, there was one theory because philosophers like to just see if they can just take things to the next level. And right. it was, what if everything actually just started today and everything previously was just memories put in your head for you starting right now and like experiences and stuff. And like, that was the the mental game that he was playing. And I, when I thought of that, I was like, wow. Okay. Well that changes a lot of things because that's also the dissociation that you can bring to the past. So you don't right. have to suffer for the things that you did before, but right. now that you know that they're there, you can change and create whatever you want to. Right. No, it's a super interesting concept. We got to look that up after. I, I want to, uh, I want to learn more about that and, just meditate that uh, on that a little bit yeah there's they have all these uh so the book i think it's called the big universe um i don't know i'll i'll find whatever the actual link to the book is yeah for sure um and he he in the beginning he's kind of talking about like all these theories he doesn't believe any of them he's like a strict physicist who and he's one of the physicists who's like we figured out all physics forever even though today they just found two or more neutrinos like hundreds of galaxies away and they're like everything that we know about astronomy isn't real anymore it's like yeah i know because you're going to keep doing that over and over again yeah um so it's interesting you could tell he writes with a lot of bias because of course he's a physicist so he knows everything uh-huh. uh but in the beginning he brings up all these cool philosophical ideologies that people have had over the years right uh, that's my favorite stuff i love uh, psychology or physio or what is it philosophy Dude, I love that as well. Um, and on the physicist side, there was a good Joe Rogan had a, I think his name is Sean Carroll. He's a physicist. This is him. This is him. This is him? It's his book. Dude, I love, the, I love him. Because what you're talking about, um, have you ever heard of the double slit experiment? Yeah. Yeah. So like that was like the first thing that kind of introduced me to like, whoa, like there's, there's a lot going on in the world of physics um, that I really just have not been uh, exposed to. I really just don't I don't even understand, you know, these are things that like just kind of went above my head when I was in school. And now I'm trying to like grasp a little bit more and like really understanding like we think that electrons are just spinning around in a circle like that. Like they don't exist in a way in which we're visualizing them. They, they're everywhere. Yeah. And, and like all those concepts that he's talking about, but he's a brilliant guy. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I've even read with a lot of the stuff that like electrons, neutrons, uh, protons, like everything that we think we know about them is like, they're arranged way differently. It looks way differently. I mean like what it's like 90% of the space isn't occupied that's around them. And yeah, that's how, where cool. they have their attraction fields. The yeah. neutron or yeah, the middle of it contains all the mass and it's like 0.01 of the whole thing. Right. It's, but then I always have to say, like, we don't know. Like, we know, we think we know, but we don't know. And everything that we get to, which is a conclusion that way, is through something that we think that we created, which is showing us that. Uh, I read the book, The Master Algorithm, recently. Mm-hmm. And he said one, like, super profound statement which this goes more into neuroscience, which I was studying. And now I realize a lot of it doesn't make as much sense as people like to just insinuate that, Oh, this brain goes, this does this. Basically he said, our brain can only perceive certain things. So our reality is dictated currently by what we can perceive. And then we think that anything that we can't perceive doesn't play into what we can, but things that we can't perceive are a hundred percent playing into what we can't. So basically he was saying like with neutron, proton, uh, electron, maybe there's something else, but we can't see it. And so we don't even think it has an interplay. And that's like the dark matter. How dark matter is like most of space. And we just thought it was blackness, but like logically you're like, wait, if it's just blackness, then the light from the sun should shine everywhere. Right. Yeah. 
No, it's in, no, like 75% of like the universe, I think they're classifying as like dark manager. And then there's like the dark energy that also makes up X amount percent of that. But like, even just like you're talking about our observable universe, like it, or not observable universe, but like what we could see, like just like here on earth, um, it's so limited. And there's a great book. It's called Incognito. David Eagleman wrote it. Dude, I got talks. that in my backpack right now. I'm Do reading it. Yeah. You're reading it? Did you get to the part where he talks about that there's like a small percentage of women that have the ability to see an additional color that we can't see? No. Yeah. So wild stuff. So he's just saying, and the point is like what we're talking about right now is that we think we have all this knowledge, but we have knowledge on what we can observe. Like when you think about the concept of like radio waves and like we can't observe it, they're there though. So there's so much potentially out there that we can't even account for because we don't even know that it's there and we can't see it, mm -hmm. we can't feel it, we can't touch it. And for the same way that like if you automatically were to like you know, not be able to see color and you only saw black and white, there would be a lack there. So like now you're aware of it because you took it away. But if, if you don't think about things because you've never had it, you never experienced it, you don't think that it's anything that's important. Um, he does another good analogy where he talks about somebody that was blind and some, you know, it was like uh, he was close enough on the spectrum where after surgery he was able to see. And he had a really a tough time transitioning because he was able to navigate his entire world in the dark for so mm. long. And the concept of sight in his own brain, didn't, it, it wasn't fully registered in a way that when you open up your eyes as a child for the first time as a toddler, as a baby, that, we, that we're able to see. And the brain is so powerful and so oh, complex. Yeah just amazing at how um how powerful it really is and how uh, how well it can adapt to meet the demands of any given situation yeah and i i know like yeah paul stamich was talking about one of his friends who was deaf and he took all these mushrooms and then he could hear ants walking on the ground because his neuroplasticity was rewiring his hearing That's but so long. i want to connect what you were just saying back to the way that you came back to learning through the academic side because sure. you were going to, you were really learning about yourself, I would say, right? At the beginning mm -hmm. few years mm -hmm. of um, founders of all these different steps. Once you started to learn about yourself, now you can perceive it. And see, one thing I think about a lot is the internal and how we often disassociate just the internal environment with our external environment. So more so like our organs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I like to, and I, I have a feeling, which I'll ask you in a second mm -hmm. that you do as well, but I like to like literally go, Oh, it's weird. Like I feel like, because I know the different locations of the organs and how the systems are working in my body, I know when mm -hmm. something's off because of X or Y, or cause I did something and I'm like, Oh, this feels sore. Or like you'll have people who are like my stomach hurt and their hands on the right side. I'm like, that's your liver. Like you've been mm -hmm. drinking a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so I have a feeling that when you went back to school, now you get this amazing, like, holy shit, I can put together the, the information. I have the words and then I can take the words and put it on these different areas and understand it, which is right. kind of like the blind person who needs almost like those weird capicha uh, things where you have to slide and get the puzzle piece into the right spot. That's like how their yeah. brain's trying to figure out vision. Right. Right. No, a hundred, a hundred percent. Um, so just to, to touch on a little bit what you're saying too, because I don't think, you know, too many listeners are too familiar and I do think it's important to, to, to touch a little bit on like intuition. Um, and really my philosophy on a, approaching life and finding like your true purpose and your true why is all you're ever given is, you know, a choice. Um, and at any given time, all you have is the best available information to make the best decision you can. And then hindsight's twenty twenty on that choice. So when I was in my early 20s, was, you know, I had a college degree in business and that just my dad was in business. I thought it was a logical thing to do, but I had no desire to like actually like work for a corporation at the time. So I went to acting school and I was trying to bartend and like whatever personal train and there was just a, there wasn't a lot of like uh, grounded substance and I was getting a lot of pressure to like, all right, like you did your acting school and stuff, now get a job. And as I was personal training, I had met someone who was very successful, was in his early thirties, driving nice cars, making a ton of money, like making over half a million dollars a year. And I was like, you know what? Like 
that that sounds like what I should be doing right now. Like, let, like get me in as an associate, whatever I need to do. Um, I was just started dating my fiance or, you know, my now fiance, she was my girlfriend at the time. Like, let, let me like take this next step into adulthood. And I, I did it for a couple of years and I was, you know, I got promoted. I had my own territory and I was doing extremely well and the company messed up licensing. So it doesn't really matter what happened, but basically we had, we were a healthcare service. We provided testing like uh, somebody has cancer. How do you find out that they have cancer? Well, that, that information gets sent to the lab. There were lab reports back to the doctor. I worked for the lab and I was a liaison between the doctor and the lab and we would draw blood in the office. So our, um, our department made a mistake in how they applied for the license. So all my business, like two, $3 million of business that we were billing out on a monthly basis, it all got shut down. The VP of the company was like, listen, man, I got nothing for you right now. We may transfer you to California, Florida or something. Just, just stay busy. Like stay busy doing what, man? <laughs> I don't know, but just be grateful that we're still paying you on all your commissions and your salary. Just stay busy. So I have this idea for a mobile app, you know, like now's the time, make it happen. I raised six six figures for this app. I get it launched on the app store. Apps a complete failure. I did everything wrong that I possibly could have done. Spent way too much on upfront costs. I didn't find out enough about, um, you know, actual like real data from potential users. Mm -hmm. Just was a, it was a complete disaster, but in that process, I learned a lot, and I was asked to, to come down and do a talk at Founders, which was Gerard Adams' Social Accelerator in Newark. I, day I go down to Founders, I look at the whiteboard, and I see names of all people that I had in my mind said I want to meet within the next year, like Lewis House, yeah. um, Steve Weatherford, Gary V, Gerard himself. It was all these different people. So I'm a big person on signs also. I'm like, well, this is it. Like The, the sign, the reason why... You know, the, um, yeah. I lost the licensing was the, allowed me to have the app to put me in this place right now. So I jumped into founders and it, almost a year of my life went into that company and it just, um, it was another failure for me personally. It was yeah. a failure for me in terms of it did not pan out. It's not what I thought it was. And it also wasn't I realized that, again, I'm getting further away from my, why I'm not a tech sales corporate business guy. That's just not me. Um, but if I didn't have those experiences, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I wouldn't have been able to know with the, uh, the sense of authority and the, the really conviction that I have right now, had I not experienced those other things. So I think the hardest part for a lot of people is to continue to move forward. And, um, Steve Jobs says this well in his commencement speech. And it was, um, the only way to be truly satisfied is to do great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. And if you haven't found it yet, don't settle. And that for me is really, I think, um, the biggest message that I would get across is just people settle. And they settle because they have families. They settle because they feel like there's no other way out. You just can't do it. And if, yeah. if you feel like you can't do it today, then make a plan to do it in a year or two years and three years because – like we said earlier, there's only one life to live and to live it any less than you think you were meant to or any less than your full capability is really just sacrifice the gift. Yeah, dude, yeah. that is awesome. Thank you for telling the story. Know that a hundred percent. I mean, it's literally your gut, like you know so much more than you think, you know, and I, um, what's the, the, the activation of the brain that happens when you're on a psychedelic, it's the, uh, I forget what the, the, the brain system is called, but essentially that's like your, most of your brain shuts off and there's this component. Like the prefrontal cortex? No, it's not the prefrontal. Oh, yeah. It's a system. So it, the prefrontal has a play in it. Right. Most of the brain is off and it's allowing you to really explore who you are in that sense. You know, uh, I don't know if hypofrontality is the only other thing I could think of maybe. But it's uh, hmm. it's, uh, like, right, it's right. something where it's like the basic brain complex, or I forget. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm reading the Michael Pollan book too. I have, I, I'm ridiculous. <laughs> I, I have like four audiobooks and like four physical books. Huh. And like if I get bored of listening to one of the books, because like I notice, I know when I'm starting to wade on it, certain information, then I'll throw on the other one. And I'm like, oh, cool, new stuff. <laughs> um, so. Basically, it's allowing you to do that introspection to really like get into what is your brain, you, you, who you are thinking. 
Right. And a lot of times we try to intellectually outthink the, like who we are. Right. And I think it's awesome that you actually were like, that doesn't like, this is great. And most people would love this, but I know that I won't ever. Right. So right. I need to go and follow exactly. So what is your why then? Yeah. So my why is really allowing people to live to the being able to facilitate whatever blockage somebody has to allow them to reach their full potential and to live life to the fullest. Hell yeah. The way in which that I think that most people need to facilitate that really does come from like a first mental and physical component. Oh yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean like literally if you're homeless in somewhere like Bali or something and like someone like throws you a five, like you mm-hmm. can eat like amazing food. And if you're fit and you're doing good, you're mm-hmm. out in the sun and you're happy. Like mm-hmm. the, I always joke, we joke about this, uh, me and a few of my friends, but they're like, oh, live on the sur- or live on the beach and just mm-hmm. wax surfboards all day and be happy. And mm-hmm. it's like, that is a for like happiness is all within. And right. you can facilitate that and you get someone in a good mental state and the mental state starts from the physical state because they both are, they show each other pretty well. Right. Unless, you know, you have all the fit sick people nowadays, but right. then yes, it's uh, it's a lot easier to help them live to the fullest of who they can be. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, there's a psychologist, his name's Martin Seligman, and he classifies happiness in like three different tiers. So he's like the pleasant life, the good life, and then the meaningful life. So like somebody waxing surfboards could be, um, it would really be like in the good life. Right? And this is like, um, you as an individual are fully content Mm -hmm. but the meaningful life you could only tap into that in when you're facilitating happiness in others and as human beings that is when we are the most happy and but you can't get to that point if you yourself are not happy and that's why it's so important to me to allow other people to live to the fullest in their life because if they can live to the fullest in their life then they have the ability to be creative and to also facilitate good in others and that's how i think you can make the most impact Totally. Yeah. Again, that's like the whole don't hate rich people because you, they can help you the best in reality. Like they can facilitate, you could with like the wellness center, right? Mm -hmm. If you, if you always hated billionaires and then you meet one and he's like, I love the idea. I love to help. And you're like, no, you just want money. And it's like, regardless, like if you have the mission, you're setting it straight and it's good. Uh And yeah, no, that is awesome. One of my favorite books on happiness. Well, I probably have two. Have you read stumbling upon happiness? No, I haven't. Uh, that book is super interesting. He's yeah. really just, I mean, it's kind of in the end. He's like, hey, you can't really find happiness. You'll never find it. <laughs> but like, like the whole book, he's doing like cool comparative analysis of like different happiness levels in people. Uh-huh. You know, one person might be, have, be the happiest they've ever been, but that's a five on your happiness level. And right. how it changes based on people, based on experiences, who you are. But my probably my favorite one that I've read recently is Solve for Happy. Solve for happy? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's by Mo Guada, and he was like, uh, helped create the Google algorithm, but his son died. And so okay. it's the algorithm for happiness that he like had to find. Um, it's phenomenal. That book, like it, cause it's just so it's, he uses a lot of physics, a lot of like, he's an engineer. So he was right. the, the head engineer of Google. So right. he's using like all these like, what was the name of that book yet? Solve for happy. He wrote another book, didn't he? Where he, um, it, it, he like plots happiness on like different scales or no, it's like you're, it, he gives your subconscious different names, like the judge. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. What is that? Uh, either anyway, I don't want, yeah. I don't want to harp on that, but yeah, I got to look into that. Dude. Mm. It's so good. And it's one of those books too. Cause like, you know, everyone experiences death at one point or another. And he kind of like lays out like the framework for like, if you have a belief system, if you don't have a belief system, how it will go. Like, mm-hmm. cause if you don't have a belief system and someone dies and most of the time you're very pessimistic about it. Right. And this is kind of like what you were talking about before where it's like, there's a metaphysical component to life. No one can debate that. And if you try to debate it and you're using just pure physics, then I'm going to say your eyes are incorrect because rods and cones can only pick up so much. Mm-hmm. But with the metaphysical and with the knowingness of there's something else, people who believe that typically are happier and live longer than people who are like, no, there's nothing. We're all going right. to die. And right. I love Jordan Peterson talks about this. If you take those people, 
uh-huh. and they're at gunpoint or something, watch how how much they actually think that something else exists because they're like, please, something help me, please, whatever it is. It's the truth, man. It really is. Because like I was raised Catholic, and then the older I got, and then the different things with the Catholic Church and the media and corruption, all that mm-hmm. stuff. I'm like, I, I can't associate with this. But when time gets bad, the first thing I start to do is start praying. Yeah, it really is. And um, then like it became more of a practice because you do kind of, a, you know, you want to. Life is better, right? Like you can live yep. two different ways, right? Like, life is better when you have that component to it totally yeah i mean but but that's like that's with most things and it's what we're talking about it's following your intuition right again you're trusting something that you intellectually don't think it's gonna pan out at the beginning but you're like i just can't do this other thing i know i can't i don't know why and then just like you were saying i'm the same way where i'm like certain situations are literally set up by the universe for x right and like for instance a lot of times uh, doing consulting or something, I'm like, oh shit, I got to find someone. And then I'm like, you know, I know as soon as I find someone, four other people are going to be like, hey, no, yeah, I need help too. <laughs> and it always works that way. You're always like, that is the uh, get rich overnight, like the overnight success thing. Right. Where it's like you worked for all this time and you're trying and you're trying. And then you're like, oh, I got one. And then you're like, oh, shit, I got all these people. Like, what's going on? This makes sense. Dude, it's, it's like that with everything. Like, I mean, now, now I'm engaged or getting married in a week. But, like, when I was single, there'd be, like, a month where I wasn't talking to any girls. And there a month, there'd be, like, five girls, like, all of a sudden. And then I came. Like, where were you last month? And it's, yep. it's literally like that. It's like that with business. You got no clients at all. And then, like, all of a sudden, you have, like, an abundance of clients that you don't, like, you can't take care of. It's like, where did yeah. you guys all come from? Yeah. And I love that. And I think that that's something that honestly relates back to health once again, where it's like with health, a lot of people think they're going to see this change overnight and it's takes, let's say eight, 10, 12 months. And then you hit that one and you're like, Hey, wow, this is crazy. I can do this one thing. And then you realize all these different things that you unlocked kind of like a video game. Right. That's exactly what it is. And it, that taps into one, all the work that you were doing, you know, that now like the fruits of your labor are going to start to shine through. And then also like the, the vibration and the frequency that like you start vibrating off of, like when you do get that first close or like when you do get like that one girl that likes you or the one guy that whatever it is, you know, you just start to um, put it out there more into the universe mm-hmm. and it like starts to come back too. But it definitely has to do with like how you set yourself up in like the, in the months prior to weeks prior to get to that point in time. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with all that, someone thinks you're attractive. You're like, Oh, maybe I am attractive. And then you yeah. act different. You're like, yeah, I'm attractive. And then all these people come clients, yeah. someone yeah. wants your business. You're like, wow, I can actually help people. Boom. Yeah. Everybody's like, Oh yeah, I want help too. Right. Yeah, it's so cool. So right. I got to ask, what is your higher leverage skill? So higher leverage skill is something like learning to learn, learning to breathe. It can influence multiple areas of your life. And it's kind of a tool that allows you to tap in to new areas because you have this underlying structure and foundation that you built before. So Mm -hmm. learning to learn, if you know Mm -hmm. how to learn, you can learn anything better Mm -hmm. and so on and so forth with, uh, could be mental paradigms of like, uh, pattern recognition or whatever it is. Is there anything that you've used specifically, which has helped with really taking you to where you are today? Yeah. So, and tell me that this, this is what you're looking for. So one thing that I definitely do is I approach everything where if there's something that I currently want and it's, um, like when I was approaching the app, like there is a process, like somebody already has done it. All I need to do is figure out, reverse engineer and figure out what the basic aspects are to that process and then apply it to what I'm trying to do. Uh, It's the same thing for like gaining weight, losing weight, building muscle. Like there's a science to it. And if it could be done efficiently and effectively, what are the components Mm -hmm. and how do you take that down to the most basic level and put it almost into like a template and then apply those principles to whatever it is that you're trying to do. So it's like basically trying to to deduce things to the most basic way uh, as you possibly can. And then, you know, utilize those set of principles or the, that given set of, uh, um, of how it would like, you know, 
progress and then apply that based off of somebody else that's already done it or the science or the evidence that's available. Totally. So honestly, yeah. So it's finding the foundational components. So I know like Josh Waitzkin, when he was learning chess, would just learn the end or like when he helped Tim Ferriss learn it, he was like, okay, here's, you're about to be taken. What do you do? Right. And it's like, then you build backwards and backwards. Right. And it's just, it seems like for you, it's like open systems in a sense, because you're developing a system, utilizing the information that you're getting. And then the more information that comes in, you're tinkering and creating a better, bigger, more foundational system. Hell yeah. That's it. Right. So it's like, okay, I want, I want to gain muscle. I want to lose fat just because this is like my passion. So like, I want to gain muscle. I want to lose fat. Well, what does it take? to gain muscle. What is the science that's available that shows, okay, now I have that. What's now to lose fat? Now I have this, right? Or like, I want to be happy out of all the evidence that's available. What is happiness and how do people achieve it? And now where I am looking at that, how do I then make that happen? And that's how I just try to approach, approach everything. Yeah. And for people who are listening with evidence, do you mean just like double placebo studies or are you saying, evidence put out there by so on and so forth so the, you know like the double placebo studies there's definitely um that's definitely an important component when it comes to like when you're talking about the um the health side of things or the wellness side of things but you cannot discount experience and like firsthand experience so like even evidence from like my own self like i've dieted i've done intermittent fasting keto diet or keto dieting i've done vegan all these different types of diets yeah. so i've had to take the evidence of what i've learned is best for me and is best for my lifestyle and then also that's like a part of like the research components like you know what else is out what what other people put out and then also what i could what I could tell from like my own experiences from mm-hmm. what I've done um, and then apply that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's always a huge thing to bring up too. Cause most people evidence are like, show me study. I'm like, dude, doesn't work that way. If you even knew how studies were conducted and who they were funded by most of the time you would not believe them. So, so yeah, there's, there's all different types of biases with, within every single study that you'll possibly see. There's a small data size. It's like you said, who's actually putting it out there to confirm yeah. their bias. There's a lot, but there, there's something to show, you know what I mean? Sometimes when you have some sort of research that's available, especially when it comes to like, and I'm just, I'm literally referring to these things when it comes to building muscle, losing yeah. weight, or like finding happiness from like a psychological perspective. Um, there is some good evidence out there on like those three things. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, well, with what we were just talking about, I got to get into the next question, which is currently, are you questioning anything? Um, I always question studies, but questioning, it could be politics, religion, life, how the universe works, or it's just something, it could be literally from the most granular to the biggest um, zoomed out picture of something that people always say in mass consensus, like whatever it is, and you are starting to go, I don't really think it works that way. So it's funny that you said that. Do you watch Westworld? Oh yeah. Yeah. So I just watched uh, the season finale. It was like probably like two weeks late on like when it actually aired. And it was just talking about the fundamental nature of like humans versus the fundamental nature of the hosts being the machines. Yep. And I was just like, I just sat there for like 20, 30 minutes, like thinking about like Bernard's decision. And I was just like, well, fuck man. Like, I don't know. Like, like we, when, um, you know, Elsie got murdered, I'm like, oh, that's people. It's corruption. Yeah. Like, it, you know, yeah. like, uh, like is that is that all people's like that all human nature like there's billions of us um what is our inherent human nature and like is is there like a way to like build like artificial intelligence that like the the earth and our planet and everything would be better and then it's like well and then they tap into consciousness well what's the difference between their consciousness and our consciousness and yep. is our consciousness superior or inferior um, so those are things that I've definitely been, been <laughs> questioning for the past 24 hours. Um, oh, and it's, yeah. I, I don't definitely don't have, have an answer or have a good conclusion to it because, you know, you'll see one person like, you know, like yourself, like I'm, I met you, you know, pretty much a complete stranger. And like now we've established like this rapport, this friendship. Totally. And it's just like, yeah, that's another genuine good person in the world. And that, that just brings me joy and it's exciting. And it's like, yeah, there's other people out there like that. 
And then you'll see someone out there, like you just need to turn on the news, like who got murdered, who did something, you know, who yeah. killed their own child, who murdered their wife when their baby was sleeping. And it's like, what? Like, how does that happen today? Like, how are these things going on in our society too? Or like then at the country level, like what different countries are doing to other countries? Yeah. It's like, we're all human beings. Like how, how can we, with the knowledge that we have and the sophistication that we have still be living this primitive like if there is a more advanced whatever right and this is a simulation like can you imagine like what they're looking at like holy shit like the, look at them like they're yeah. nuts it's yeah, well but. so yeah so because oh, man i think about this a lot too and i think there's like there's a few things it's one incentives and it's the way that we structure society at the beginning, like the foundations of what someone learned, like, right, you take a blank slate, a baby, uh -huh. you introduce them to the world, then you look at those two parents and you see, okay, what did they help put into them? Okay, now school. Uh -huh. What did school teach them? Well, you got to make money to live. Uh -huh. And what did all their incentives likely show them? Unless they had good friends and a good family that was trying to teach them something else, that making money and business is business. So sometimes you just gotta like screw up people over. Mm -hmm. Then like we're venturing into more peaceful, but I think anytime you have 8 billion variables running around, like you're just gonna see everything because it's very hard, like especially with the consciousness. Mm -hmm. I think about this all the time. Consciousness, if consciousness is one thing, right? And it's experiencing itself and it's doing it through all of us. Mm -hmm. it's got to have some weird shit that it wants to experience, which is like all these like crazy things that go on in the world. Cause like, even like what we're talking about, like there's things 150,000 times crazier going on between two people, you know? Right. Well, dude, there's, there's two things that I, I think right now, and I don't know if you want to go down this road. Yeah. So you tell me cut off one. I feel like every single person on this face of the earth, when they're ready should experience psychedelics and mm -hmm. psychedelics and plant medicine should be incorporated into like mainstream society. Um, there are plants. Now I'm not talking about like things that are um, made in laboratories. I'm thinking that's, you know, yep. ayahuasca mushrooms, th things that exist in nature. I genuinely believe that we advance as human beings because we were introduced to psychedelics and different neurons, things we're able to fire off or we're able to see things and feel things and tap into things that we'd otherwise be not able to tap into. And the fact that there's people that are run the world and have never experienced those types of things. Yep. Um, I think that that is, is, is a major part of the problem. I also think a major part of the problem is that here you were talking earlier, how like, imagine if this is, um, all, all, everything that we have prior to today was all pre-programmed. Yeah. Well, dude, think about like everything that we are today is built on uh, thousands of years of like human evolution. Yep. But, you know, 2,500, 3,000, 5,000 years ago, like that was very primitive. And we're, we were building on that, like slowly building on that. Like if you just stopped everything and just like analyze all our resources, the state of the world, the, yep. you know, people, countries, borders, everything today, it would not be structured the way that we have it. It's, this was just a continuous linear evolution of how things work if you were to analyze them from a much more macro perspective and be like, just forget about everything for a second, forget about yep. arbitrary borders and lines in the sand and all these other things. Like, let's just look, let's look at the knowledge that we have today. Let's look at the resources that we have. Let's look at what the world is today and what people are today. How would we structure it? Yep. How can we optimize this for a life of 7.5 billion people that it's going to project to grow to this? And this is what we have to work with. Let's forget you can't go to Mars. Like, this is what we got. These yep. are our resources. These are our people. How would we structure society? And what would that look like? And it, it sounds super far out. And I guess it is. But like, at the end of the day, it's, re it's really not. Like, no, you're it's talking not. about, like, you take, like, the, like, the concept of, like, United Nations. Like, you take, like, the smartest. And, like, this shouldn't be, like, necessarily elected the way that we have it. But you take the smartest yeah. and, like, the most, like, influential, like, good-hearted, genuine people in, like, each area. And, like, you get them together and you spend the next X amount of years, like, figuring things out to make this a better place. Yes, dude, yeah. 100%. That is quite literally our problem is we're running before we even learn how. And like, 
it's the same thing with the intuition. It's the same thing with having one life and understanding that the more that you under like, so I get into a lot of debates because uh, one, I love to debate with people, but two, because when it comes to any of these movements, right, they're all movements because the moment that they win, Mm -hmm. they have to find something else to be a movement against. And so if you read anything about like crowd psychology, Mm -hmm. the crowd has to have an enemy. The reason the U S is always against someone is because if it's not, why are we banded together? Why do people actually like go, we need the government to do X, Y, and Z for us. No, we would then probably be like, well, everyone's cool. Like, yeah, just let them in (laughs) because like, that's the way humans should be. Like we shouldn't have the borders. The borders make no sense. The borders, the more that you have borders, the more people want to attack what's inside the borders, strip all the borders. And then there's no terrorists because the terrorists are like, fuck, there's not a such thing as, you know, the U S anymore. And instead you got to find that dick who like did the thing to you. Right. Right. I dude, I'm a hundred percent on board where it's like, if people would just realize that things are too big, they're too out of control Mm -hmm. and the systems are too big that that were designed and the bigger the system, the easier it is for it to break. Right. So if we can go back to components, right. Like, uh, state-based, uh, governments, Right. where it's not necessarily a border, but instead it's a smaller governing body mm-hmm. where people have more freedom and then they can move. Like if you want to go from, if you don't like that government, then you just move a state over. Mm-hmm. And people think that's so logical. A lot of times they're like, no, you can, no one can move. It's like everyone can move anywhere. It's 21st century. Like it's the easiest thing ever to do. Right. I, yeah. Oh, dude, I totally agree. Like a hundred percent. Yeah. I think... I think it's going to happen more and more and you see big people like Elon Musk or like Jeff Bezos with these grandiose ideas, but their ideas that will result, basically it's like, it's going to push. A lot of people are not going to be happy for a while because they're going to be like, everything's changing. This is the worst ever, Mm -hmm. but everyone will get stronger in the end. So it's just, you know, you got to sometimes introduce a virus to make the body resilient to what it's going to be. That's the truth. It really is. That's our earth. Hopefully it doesn't kill all of us because it's like, we're the virus. Yeah, I know. I know. And that, and that scenario, we definitely are. Yeah, I, had, yeah. I had like one of the biggest, I had the weirdest dream. And I woke up like whole, like almost like in a panic, but it was literally like the earth was just like, nope, fuck it. And just like water just washed over everything that was existing. And I was like, that could just happen at any moment. And there's no control. Yeah, every time I look at the ocean, I literally just think about that. Like, this massive, massive body of water. And, like, you look at, like, the force of, like, a little wave as it hits you. Like, you imagine, like, you know, really, if, like, an asteroid did hit and there was, like, a massive metal wave, man, like, at any given time, like, yeah, you just kind of got to respect that Mother Nature at the end of the day really has the most power out of everything. Totally. And that leads into the psychedelics, which I agree. I think it's create one. I do like the stoned ape theory, Mm -hmm. uh, which is that the development of the neurons from the the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Although I have a like a little bone to pick with evolution. Of course I have bone to pick with many things, but like in salt for happy in the end, he goes through like the amount of time that would have taken for an ape to actually develop to a human and how there's no way that in the amount of time that, we say evolution would have taken place that that could have actually happened a full train change like that. Okay. And then you also get people like nowadays who are like in 2045 evolution will get rid of your toes. And I'm like, why would evolution get rid of your toes? Like, where do you think that's, these are just scientists closed systems. Right. And then, uh, Ray Pete, one of the, uh, nutritionists talks about how the evolution theory is very flawed because evolution doesn't work the way that we get taught it in school, which is just like, ape human it's like there's crazy amount of things going on Mm -hmm. and a lot more than just like that's why like we keep finding these new species of basically the primitive humans like the midgets and like all these different things that were coming about and that were like holy shit like they're like hey we found a new one we don't know what it is yeah 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 the book sapiens have you heard of the book sapiens 
Yes. So I do the same thing as you do. Uh, have you heard of Scribe, the app Scribe, where you pay like, it's like Netflix for books and audiobooks. You pay like $8 no. a month. Oh yeah, I send it to you. Dude. So I, I have a tendency to do that. At any given time, I probably have like four different like physical books that I'm reading. I have like one on like a digital copy on like a Kindle and then I have the audiobooks going. Yep. And I'm constantly listening. So like for Sapiens, for example, I listened to, or I was reading maybe like the first couple chapters and you know, all those things were blowing my mind and how many holes are really in the theories was blowing my mind. Like I thought that there were like, when it came to evolution, like we pretty much knew what the fuck was up. We still have no real idea what, yeah. what was going on or why or how or where, like all these other things. Yeah, dude. Yeah. But that's with everything. It's like yeah. the whole, like we were talking about a second ago, the water. I mean, if uh, younger dry is too, which was the comment that would have hit, Right. Uh, after the ice age or during that time if that happened and it melted all the ice that was in the u.s and then um uh, i forget what his name is i think it's randall pitch or something something like that he says that like the mountains in washington were created in literally like two hours just mm -hmm. based on crazy continuous water flowing like that's, that's something that humans would everyone dies just right away it's all like okay. <laughs> yeah. there's no surviving like you can't even it's not like uh what's his name bear grills is like no i can figure this one out it's like nope bear you're, <laughs> no, dude, you're done you're done <laughs> it's, it's, it's i mean we don't we don't understand a lot of things and then once you try psychedelics and you start to open your mind you realize we really don't understand anything mm -hmm. and it's okay mm-hmm well, the thing too that I think is interesting about psychedelics is like people think that that is, um, it's the drug that's creating these visions or these connections versus mm -hmm. like the, the drug is just showing you what else is going on in here that's, that's being suppressed or that you can otherwise not tap into, yep. right? So it's like, it's just shining a light on an area that's dark um, in a cool way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And I, and it's almost like with that analogy, shining a light, light on an area that's dark, it's also for the feminine, animalistic, violent responses that a lot of people have to each other. Mm -hmm. One dose of psychedelics and you're like, everybody's cool. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, and also too, like it's, everything is like dose dependent, right? Like if you take too much of something like alcohol, like nobody questions like alcohol, but like alcohol on average kills like 80 something million people in the U S alone. And like, yeah. I'm sure that there's some, um, not some, but there, that's like drunk driving and stuff built into there. But then it, it takes away. I think I, I read this recently that, um, on a yearly basis, alcohol will take 10 years off the life of like 250 million people. But like alcohol is like completely kosher. Like nobody questions like, oh, have a few drinks and stuff. But like then you research mushrooms. I mean, re research yeah. like what, what are the health, um, whatever, like the, the negative health consequence associated with that or DMT or all these other, you know, ayahuasca plant medicines and stuff. And it's like, why? Well, you know, again, going back to money and capitalism, yep. and, you know, how you can monetize and control things. But yeah, everything is dose dependent too. So yeah, if you take too much, had a bad experience, it's the same thing with any other controlled substance. If you take too much of it, if you don't do it the right way, like, yeah, if yeah. you're in the wrong setting, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot that could go wrong. Yeah. Have you ever had a hangover? Well, you drank too much alcohol. Yeah. And like, and I've talked to people about this and they're like, yeah, but like you could become psychotic from drinking or from taking mushrooms or whatever. And like, yes, people do have weird mental breaks that happen. But then I'm like, but let's look at the average statistics. There's 7.5 billion people. Majority of them drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. How many of them actually get a mental psychotic break? tons from yeah. alcohol right. so i'm like then you have one guy out of like twenty five thousand who take mushrooms one time and you have like a population of people who take mushrooms like maybe like 10 million on the earth right the statistics always points to alcohol is horrible cigarettes are horrible like these different things are bad but something that can like radically change who you are get you to stop stuttering get you to like question who you are and then be a kinder person that helps the environment. I'm right. like, I think I'll take the risk of allowing people to do that. Of course, 
they make it legal, it's like, okay, you can't drive ambient rooms. It's like yeah. certain things like that, of course. Yeah, yeah. But then it's like, just um, uh, I just imagine like with the internet and how amazing it is now, like how much you could be like, here's my trip, here's what happened. And I know there's a few chat forums for that, but like you could have people like getting together and like coming together more often or like, hey, like do this with this, don't do this, make sure like it goes this way. Because then I know when Silk Road was created, you know, Silk Road, the drug trading website. Uh, I've, actually, I've not Silk Road, no. Okay, so yeah. great book, American Kingpin. Uh-huh. Um, it's about Ross Enemet who created it. I was big into reading about all this stuff, but basically like the website was allowing anybody in the world to get drugs and it would get mm-hmm. shipped to your door. Mm-hmm. Um, and he wasn't getting caught, all this stuff. During those years, drug related crimes dropped like dramatically. And the reason is because people were getting it from an honest site on the internet. It had an Amazon basically ranking system. So you'd get ratings if they were good or bad drugs. People would write down like what happened, the review, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But there was never like, I'm in a back alley and I'm buying drugs from someone. I get tainted drugs and the guy stabs me. Right, 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 right. Yeah, no, it's so, dude, it's, um, what you're saying is 100% on point. And like, forget alcohol, man. Like Xanax, Klonopin, like Oxycontin, like all these other yes. um, prescription drugs that are completely like, like look at the chemical component of them and then look how that alters like brain chemistry. I like, oh, it's okay to give like children Adderall oh and then my like, God. prescribe like adults like Xanax like at night to take after they've taken like Adderall or like Vyvanse during the day and then they throw a few drinks in there. Like, come on, man. Like those things are, are so detrimental to our society um, and the pharmaceuticals and the power that they have and the and the, um, the fact that our government still allows pharmaceutical companies to market their direct to consumers. There's so much wrong with that. And it's so bad. And there's so many different ways that's just like uh, um, it, through education and through knowledge that people could equip themselves with like, okay, like this is how I really should be living. Yep. This is how I should take care of my stress. And like, these are the types of things that I should be putting in my body or at least trying to put into my body and experience before I put, you know, those types of chemicals into it. Yeah. Yeah. No, dude, I had the hardest time at the company that I worked for before marketing the word testosterone on Facebook, but look Mm -hmm. at what the pharma can get away from because they, they have a premium and they pay like this other stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you give your kids Adderall, you are actually a bad parent. Like I will a hundred percent say that because like, take it. If you've never taken it and your kids are taking it, try it because you're Mm going to be like, holy shit, this is speed. If you've ever done cocaine, you're like, this is cocaine, but it lasts the whole day. Yeah is and if you give a hyperactive kid speed and then he becomes more focused it's because it's doing something fucked up to make him hyper focused on one thing versus wanting to be a kid and explore the world yeah man i have a major 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 problem with that i have a major problem with how we treat pain too and that also goes into the chiropractic aspect is that so many people their method for treating pain is to take a pill yep. and like that's again goes to like you know medical doctors and not knocking because there's a lot of great medical doctors but they place such an emphasis on pharmaceuticals and because pharmaceuticals definitely have a somewhat of a control of the education of the entire medical system that yeah of course that's what they're going to be taught they're not taught anything about nutrition like five percent of their curriculum is on nutrition and their you know x amount percent is on pharmaceuticals so yeah, well, what's going on with all these things that you're giving people? And that's why how chiropractors, and there's good chiropractors and bad chiropractors, and chiropractors that think that adjusting your upper cervical is going to fix everything, but the chiropractors that practice ART like you were talking yeah. about, that, that know how to manipulate soft tissue, that really understand the entire muscular skeletal system, and that the nervous system really is, the central nervous system really is the control center of the body, and it's not going to fix everything, but through nutrition and through holistic type of approaches and small you know little amount of intervention from external substances that really is the way that we should be approaching health in in this world yeah yeah if you're in pain and you take pain medication it's like if you get a text message to your phone and you flip it over you still Mm -hmm. got the text you're still the pain is a signal for something that is going on yeah okay cool put your shit on mute but guess what whatever is fucked up is still fucked up and if you don't take care of it 
give it a couple of years and watch how it just burns you down. Like look at the old people who are like completely hunched over. Their yeah. knees don't work. Their ankles are duck footed. They're doing, I'm like, I'm like, it would have taken you 10 minutes a day and you would be a 90 year old, like perfect posture walking around 10 minutes a day. Yeah, dude, that's it. It really all, it really is just like these small amounts of investment within yourself and just having that knowledge um, on how to do it. And people just put too much trust. It's like, oh, they're a doctor. Like they know everything. Like, nah, not really. Like, you know, there's an opioid crisis and the opioid <laughs> crisis is coming from doctors that are writing those prescriptions like in excess. So it's not, you know, the end all be all. But people don't know then where to go. Um, there's a really sad documentary on Netflix right now. It's, it was interviewing all obese children. Yeah. Like these kids were like trying so hard and like, I think I'm eating healthy. And like, they just don't have the knowledge necessary to like mm -hmm. make the appropriate decisions for themselves. Yeah. And then you get advertising to children's a whole nother issue, but what yeah. you're allowed to put on for commercials and stuff for kids, like it's yeah. bad because yeah, it influences it them completely. Yeah. They're like Nickelodeon says it's cool if I eat candy and drink uh, Coke all day. It's like, no, there, that was an ad on Nickelodeon. That yeah. wasn't Nickelodeon, but they don't know that because it's the authority and the authority is telling them to eat the shitty food. Oh, dude, I remember being a kid. I mean, I saw two can Sam. I was like, give me some Fruit Loops. Like, that looks freaking awesome. Yeah. yeah. Hey, if you want to sell stuff good, learn how to sell it to the kids because the parents will buy it for them. It's the truth. It really yeah. is. It's horrible. So is there anything right now that you're currently obsessed with? Could be object or book or whatever it is. So is there anything right now? I'm quite upset. Being honest with you, man, um, the fact that we're getting married next week is yeah. been like that's been everything. Like we've been doing last minute details. We're going to Hawaii for our honeymoon. I've never been to Hawaii. Um, I've been dying to since I was like a little kid learn how to surf, and I've yeah. never, I've never even attempted it. I've never even gone on a surfboard. I went paddle boarding for the first time too when I was in Florida, and I'm gonna do like surfing lessons in Hawaii. Nice. So like that, that to me has been, I feel like a little kid who's like going <laughs> to Disney World for the first time. Oh, yeah. I am so stoked, man, to just get in the water and like hop on a surfboard like in Hawaii for the first time. Um, and I'm like trying to like read and like learn. Like I don't want to look like a jackass or like look like yeah. somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, but I'm so excited for that. Dude, that is awesome. Hell yeah. yeah. No, and congrats. You're Thank you. A lot of fun. Hawaii, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we could go wrong there, right? No. And you yeah. get all good food, good people, good like everyone's happy. No one's sad in Hawaii. Well, there's probably some sad people, but For most people aren't sad. Yeah. <laughs> so hell yeah. So where can people find you before we sign off? So the best place right now would be uh, LinkedIn or Instagram. So LinkedIn, just first, last name, Toby DeTolo. And then Instagram, it's the same as well. I'm pretty good with answering all DMs and um just would love to connect with anybody that's looking to reach out. Hell yeah. Awesome. And well, again, thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, dude. Thank you for having me. It's been a blast chatting. Awesome.